All right, we're going to take a look at how to do the online air track collision lab. Here's the link that will open up the simulator, which looks something like this when you click on perform an experiment. Don't forget your pre-lab questions. Here's a picture that shows you where time one initial, time two final, and time one final all come from. Uh, so if you ever get stuck, you're welcome to look at that. But I'm going to concentrate this video on the data table, which is where most people have their trouble. So the information that we're going to be getting from our simulator are the masses, the lengths, and the times. Everything else we're going to calculate. So here's how we get the masses, the lengths, and the times. First, we just have to weigh the carts. Here's, by the way, here's the weigh the cart button. I put cart 1 on top, I get 5,429 grams. Now normally I would convert that to kilograms, but most people are, have been forgetting and do forget to do that. So I'm just going to leave everything in grams. This just means we're going to get very big numbers at the end, but they'll still be valid. It's just going to be in centimeters as opposed to meters and grams instead of kilograms. So now I have cart 2 on there. It's 6,813. 6, so I'm going to put that in here, 6,813. Length 1 and 2 is what I'm finding next. So I click this button to measure the length. I move my little ruler down. I see cart 1 is about 14 and a half, and cart 2 is about 11 and a half. So 14 and a half for cart one, 11 and a half for cart two. Now I'm actually going to run an experiment. We have this set at elastic. I'm going to turn the air on. I hit go. Car one hits and it's bouncing backwards very slowly. And now we have our times. Time one initial for cart one. It went through this photo gate first. So it's his very first time, 0 0.1002 is time one initial. Time one final, it hit, cart one hit and bounced back. So it's final time, the time after the collision is over here on the right side, 0 0.8848, 0 0.8848. Time two final, that means after the collision, it got hit and bounced this way. So it's time after the collision is over here, 0 0.0882, 0 0.0882, there we go. All right, now how do we get velocity one initial? Well, we'll get to that. First, we're going to finish up our getting our data down here in inelastic. The masses don't change. So for M1, it's still 5,429. Mass 2 hasn't changed. That's still 6,813. The lengths also have not changed. So I can keep those the same as well. Now I'm going to run my experiment. How do I do that? I just set it back up. I change my collision to inelastic. And remember, you want to do this before you hit new experiment. If you hit new experiment, you're going to change all your carts, and you can't just use the same masses. Turn the air on, and you go, and now they stick together. Time 1 initial is the time over here, just like it was previously, 0 0.1002, 0 0.1002. Time 1 and 2 final. By the way, this how to get this, is, as well as many of the other equations, are all listed here at the bottom. So if you're wondering where I'm getting these, it's all these equations. Help yourself to look at those while you're working on your lab, or you can follow along with me here. T1 and 2 final are these two times added together because it's how long it took both cars to go through. So when I add those two times together, what I'm going to get is 0 0.4024 seconds. We've gotten all the information we can out of the simulator, so what I would do now, if I was going to do another trial, is hit new experiment that would change my masses. See, that one's very different. It would change the lengths, and I would just run the simulation again. But I'm not going to do that two more times. I'm just going to show you where all the numbers come from. V1 initial is found by taking the length 1 divided by time 1 initial. You want to make sure if you're finding something for 1, you're only using values for cart 1. So L1 divided by T1, and since I'm looking for initial speed, I'm using initial time. So T L1 divided by T1 initial gives me V1 initial, which is 144.71. V2 initial is zero. Remember, cart two was not moving before the collision, so it's just zero. It's gonna be zero for all three of these. V1 final is length one divided by time one final. And when I plug that in, I would get 16.388. But if I just put in 16.388, I would be incorrect. And why is that? Because remember, when we did this lab, Cart 1 came through, hit Cart 2, and bounced backwards. So I need to remember that, okay, if it's bouncing backwards, I need to make that a negative 
negative is going to matter. V2 final is L2 divided by T2 final. And when I divide those numbers, I will get 130.385. Down here, I'm doing the inelastic, V1 initial is L1 divided by time 1 initial. Those are the same numbers we had up top. So it's going to be the same value of 144.71. V2 initial is still 0 because cart 2 wasn't moving before the collision. V1 and 2 final, how do I do that? That's going to be my total lengths, L1 and L2 added together, divided by the time it took for both of them to go through the photo gate, which was T1 and 2 final. And when I do L1 plus L2, all divided by T1 and 2 final, I will get a speed of 64.61. Now I'm going to be able to solve for momentum. You can see the first line of my blue here. You can see the blue up top. So P1 initial, momentum is M, so I'm going to use M1, and M times V, and I'm going to use V1 initial. So I multiply M1 and V1 initial, I'm going to get 785,633.73 for my momentum. Now, for initial momentum of car 2, it's just zero. Why? Because its initial speed of car 2 was zero because it wasn't moving. Total momentum is P1 initial and P2 initial added together, which is very easy to get since one of them is zero. So 785,633.73. Remember, these large numbers are because we kept everything in centimeters and in grams. P1 final, well, momentum is still M times V, but for this one, we're going to use M1, and we're going to use V1 final, and that negative does matter. So P1 final is negative 88,000. 969.82. P2 final is mass 2 times velocity 2 final. When I plug that in, I'm going to get 888,316.33. Total momentum final is these two momentums added together. And when I add those together, I get 799,000. 346.5. All right, change in momentum is total momentum final minus total momentum initial. And when I take the difference between there, I change in momentum is 13,712.77. This is the percent change in momentum. So I do the, the change in momentum divided by P initial total, which is right here, total initial momentum, multiplied by 100%, and I get a change in momentum of 1.75, which is a very small change. Now we're going to do inelastic. All right, momentum is still mass, M1, times V1 initial, because I'm looking for the initial momentum of car 1. That hasn't changed, so 785,633.73. Initial momentum of car 2 is still 0, because it's still not moving initially. And the total momentum is P1 initial plus P2 initial added together, which is 785,633.73. P1 final, and the momentum of car 1 final is mass 1 multiplied by the velocity of car 1 final, which is V1 and 2 final. They move at the same speed. When I multiply those two together, I'm going to get 350,000. 780.32. P2 final is mass 2 times velocity of the car 2 final, and that is going to give me 440,203.78. Total mental, total momentum final is these two numbers added together. And that's going to be 790,984.1. Change in momentum is total momentum final minus total momentum initial. That's going to be 5,350.36. Percent change in momentum is the change in momentum divided by total momentum initial, all multiplied by 100 for the percentage, and that's going to be 
0.8%. So these, notice the change in momentum are very, very small. They should be very small numbers because momentum should be conserved in a perfect situation. Uh, so it should be very, very close to zero. All right, now we're going to do energy. Energy, kinetic energy is one half mv squared. I just have to make sure I'm using the correct m's and v's. So kinetic energy one initial is one half m1 v1 initial squared. When I plug that into my calculator, I get 56,844,756.1. Very, very large number. Again, we're dealing in centimeters and grams, which is why it's so large. Kinetic energy 2 initial is going to be 0 because the cart 2 had no initial speed. Total kinetic energy is these two numbers added together. Just going to copy and paste that for speed there. Kinetic energy 1 final is still 1 half mv squared. It's 1 half m1 v1 final squared. And because it's getting squared, the negative goes away. And when I plug that into my calculator, uh, kinetic energy one final is going to be 729,013.59. Kinetic energy two final is going to be one half M2 V2 final squared. I passed it, and that's going to be 57,911,700. 778.66. Total kinetic energy final is these two numbers added together. That's going to be 58,640,792.24. Change in kinetic energy is total kinetic energy final minus total kinetic energy initial. That's going to be 1,000, I'm sorry, 1 million, 796,000. 36.15. Doing my percent change in kinetic energy, just using the equation that's written right there, I get a percent change of 3.16. Again, that number should be pretty close to zero because kinetic energy is supposed to be conserved in an elastic collision. In an inelastic collision, I'm doing kinetic energy 1, which is 1 half m1 v initial squared. So that's going to be the exact same number that I had right there because I'm using the exact same information. Kinetic energy of car 2 initially is still 0. Oops, I accidentally changed this one blue. It's supposed to be green. You get the idea. Total kinetic energy is these two numbers added together. I'll type it in this time so I don't accidentally turn it blue. And that's just the initial kinetic energy of car 1. Kinetic energy 1 final is going to be 1 half m1 times velocity of car 1 final squared. I'm going to use 1 half m1 times v1 2 final squared. And that's going to get me kinetic energy 1 final of 11,332,366.14. Kinetic energy 2 final is 1 half, oh, 1 half m2 times v2 final. Plugging that into my calculator, I get 14,221,294.99. Total kinetic energy final are these two numbers added together. That's going to give me 25,553,661.13. Again, your numbers will be different than mine, obviously. The change in kinetic energy is total kinetic energy final. Uh, minus total kinetic energy initial. So that change is going to be a negative 31,291,094.96. And when I do my percent change in kinetic energy, I get a pretty large change here. I get negative 55.05%. And I should get a larger number here because kinetic energy is not conserved in an inelastic collision. This is showing a very, very small change means it's pretty close to being completely conserved, so it's really close to being a fully elastic collision. Not being conserved just shows that it's definitely an inelastic collision. When you're done with those, don't forget your post-lab questions. And again, all the equations that we just used are found down here. Help yourself to look at those or just follow along with this video. I hope that helps. Good luck.